My name is James Francis Kramer, Jr. I presently live in Wiccanisco. Uh, I live in a house that was built on property given to me by my grandparents, Kramer's Farm. Uh, and in 1972, when Agnes came through, I was 15 years old and I was staying at my aunt's place, which was also built on my grandparents' farm, the Stouts. So when Agnes came through in 1972, I was at my aunt's house. And when the rain started, you didn't think much of it, but as we were in the house with the rain continuing, 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 we slowly watched the Wiccanisco Creek creep up their yard toward the house. I would say it got within about 20 yards of the house before the rain subsided enough that it stopped uh, rising. Well, uh, first of all, my name is Joseph Tallman, Joseph P. Tallman, <laughs> and uh, I live in the far end, upper end, eastern end of the Williams Valley, outside the village of Muir. And um, the uh, things or the work that we did back in 1972 was that we were a full-time farm family. At the time in 1972 I was only 17 years old and uh, it was my senior year of high school. And um, the other thing about that month of June, I am a weather watcher on the side. And if you remember back in 2018, we had a very wet summer and we had uh, almost 20 inches of rain prior to the weather we had yet in the fall of 2018. And the same thing happened in May of, May and June of 72. We had a, quite a lot of rain in those two months before Agnes showed up. So I don't recall how much it was, but it had to be over, let's say 16 plus inches of rain. And then Agnes showed up, <laughs> which made it yet more. While we were at the house, I, I can't remember when we had electricity or when we didn't have electricity, but we were at the house. My aunt and uncle kept me and my two cousins busy playing games and just trying to stay calm as things were going on. Uh, as far as what we saw from the house, the rising water from the Wakenesco Creek, Creek was amazing. Creek <laughs> snuck in there. <laughs> but one thing that we saw, which was also quite amazing, uh, on the north side of the house, there was a place where uh, runoff from the farm fields had become a small stream working its way across the road. And one day while we were looking out front, a Volkswagen came flying down from Williamstown toward Wakenisco. Now at that time, Volkswagen had a commercial saying that their car floated. Well, we discovered they weren't lying because when this guy hit the stream running across the road, his car started to float downstream toward the creek. Fortunately, he had enough momentum built up that he reached the other side and was able to continue on. My dad received the first phone call probably around 6.30, if not earlier, from a neighbor there in the village of Muir. And he asked my father if we had any small pumps that he could operate or, or we could operate to pump water out of his cellar. Uh, so we went right over uh, in about, I'd say, within an hour and a half with uh, probably the only one and a half inch gas powered pump at the time. No, we had two, I'm sorry, because that's what my note says. Uh, once the rain stopped, we were taking note of what was going on in the area. And there were a lot of helicopters, of course, coming into the area uh, for both evacuation and delivering supplies. Uh, we had been listening to news reports, probably on the radio, 
and basically you were told to stay home so the emergency crews could do their job. But once we were free enough to get out of the house, we went down uh, toward Wickenisco and Likens to see what was happening. We noted that the helicopters were landing at the uh, L&W baseball field to deliver their supplies and also take, uh, take emergency uh, people, take people out in emergencies. Transported by Army truck to Williamstown. After waters subsided, Salvation Army, peanut butter, jelly, and drink, and Red Cross, ham cheese sandwich, $1.50 per sandwich, distributed food as citizens stared cleaning up properties. Town Council accepted federal aid with a caveat, abide by federal laws and regulations. Businesses went defunct and town lost revenue. Within, let's see, by 10, the rain was still raining and the water was still coming in his basement, still faster yet than that little one and a half inch pump could handle. So we still had a three and a half, three inch pump that we were able to resurrect. And we brought that one over to this man's home and started that one out because again, we didn't want to you know, he figured we were able to do the job, so we wanted to accomplish that. And by that time, the three-inch pump was able to keep ahead of the incoming water. A rock the size of a VW bug was pushed below the Lycans Reservoir. A house floated by the area at Lycans Dairy. The destruction was stunning. It humbled me. Bridges ripped out looked all too much like a war zone. You looked at one another in shock. Nothing or no one ever prepared you for this. No water, no baths, food running low. Walking around Likens, I was absolutely shocked. At that age too, any age mainly, you don't realize how powerful water can be in a flood. Going around town and seeing the bridges that were gone, uh, the streets that were torn up, uh, houses that had washed away along North Street, um, and again the fact that the north side, the south side of town, the, the houses on the hill and the south side of the town were basically cut off from the town because the bridges were all gone. And then we took that little pump that we had there at first and my father kept getting other calls uh, from other residents uh, if, uh, if we had any kind of water pumps yet that would work. So we said we had this one pump <laughs> that we took to a couple other residents. I don't remember all where they were, but we just carried that pump around the town, pumping out basements for people just because they were needed help. As Agnes left her waters, now very deep, love also came up from every little pool on former streets. People became of one mind, a unified army of helpers, whatever help was needed, food, clothing, even muscle to begin rebuilding. As things got a little better, you could walk and look around a little more, seeing the damage, talking with friends and so on. Uh, we were hopeful that it wouldn't take long for things to get back to normal, but that took a long time. In fact, I can remember trailers where the old railroad bed used to be for people who had lost their houses, a place for a place to live. They were there for quite a long time, people living in on trailers. And then my uncle Robert and his family and his men ran the Tom and Supply Company just next door to our farm. And they had a couple yet of more brand new gas powered pumps that he yet set up for community use 
and they themselves went around the community of Tower City, probably in Williamstown, pumping out people's cellars for the next three or four days with those pumps. And I'd say they maybe had three or four that were able to be used uh, to the water level in the soil and the water level in the water table all decreased to where it could be handled. Now, 50 years later, I realize the heart of our little village. One unified, solid frame of mind people. Rebuild, move on, but never ever forget. Not the loss or damage or even Agnes, no. And I know overall, Agnes had a major effect on the town itself because with the government coming in to help with uh, rebuilding and uh, bringing the town back to its feet, a lot of things changed. How the town's water supply was handled, how bridges were built, how the uh, swimming pools, there were two swimming pools on the same stream, how they were dealt with. Uh, in fact, the Lichen swimming pool at the end of town was never rebuilt. You had to have an off the stream pool built later. So the effect Agnes had 50 years down the road can still be seen within the town. And I hope we never have to deal with anything like that again. For small towns like this, it is a very, very devastating proposition to be able. That's it. All right. Thank you.